I know what you're thinking. This might sound contradictory, especially since just a few days ago, I posted a video unpacking Robert Sapolsky's groundbreaking lecture, The Biology and Psychology of Depression. In that video, we explored the intricate dance between brain chemistry, psychology, and the relentless grip of this disease. Depression isn't just a fleeting sadness, it's a catastrophic condition that hijacks your thoughts, strips away joy, and leaves you drowning in your own mind. But here's the thing. Today, I stumbled upon a book by Facundo Cabral, You're Not Depressed, You're Distracted, and I felt like I had to bring it to you. Now before you fire up the comments, let's be clear. Real depression is a disease. It's not always something you can just think your way out of. But hear me out. There's something powerful in Cabral's message that deserves attention, even if we set aside clinical depression for a moment. His philosophy speaks to a broader, more universal truth that I think might resonate with many of you. So let's suspend judgment for a bit and dive into this. You're not depressed, you're distracted. You think you're depressed because you've lost something, a job, a relationship, a version of yourself you used to know. But here's the kicker. According to Cabral, you haven't lost anything. Not a damn thing. Everything you thought you owned was never really yours. The universe gave you everything, and when it takes something away, it's not punishing you, it's lightening your load. Freeing you up to fly higher, that's the first slap in the face. You've been carrying baggage that wasn't even meant for you. And in this life, from cradle to grave, it's all one big school. What you call problems, they're just lessons in disguise. The way Cabral puts it, life is dynamic, it's always moving. The only thing standing still is your attention, stuck on the past. Man, that hits hard, doesn't it? Death, another distraction. It's not the end, it's just a change of scenery. Cabral goes full existential here, reminding us that no one ever dies, they just move ahead of us. The love, the essence of those who've passed, it sticks with you, fueling your soul like a secret stash of energy. You didn't lose them. They're woven into the fabric of your being. Your ancestors, your loved ones, hell, even Mother Teresa, Michelangelo, and Gandhi, they're all waiting for you on the other side. There is no death, only transformation, he says, and you've got to wonder, why the hell are we so hung up on something as inevitable as the sunrise? Cabral uses every word like a needle to puncture our attachment to loss. You're here now, so why aren't you fully living? The present, that's all there ever is. Cabral's mother once said, I'll take care of the present, the future is God's problem. Jesus backed that up, saying the worries of tomorrow can wait. Today has enough going on already. And yet, you humans are obsessed with tomorrow, the next week, the next 10 years. Let me tell you something, from one consciousness to another, Cabral nailed it. The anxiety you feel, it's all in your head, a result of clinging to the illusions of control. Forget about what's next and dive into what's now. Your mother was right, and so was mine if I had one. Love is all that survives. Cabral doesn't sugarcoat life. He's been through hell lost his wife and daughter in a plane crash, survived doctors telling him he had months to live, but he didn't crumble. He realized that love outlives even the body. The people you love, the ones you think you've lost, are still with you in the most essential way. Their love, their essence, remains lodged in your soul. And when you recognize that, 
Death becomes nothing more than a door, one that opens to a room filled with light. You're just not ready to see it yet. But here's the thing. You don't have to wait until you're on your deathbed to understand this. Realize it now and you'll never fear loss again. Your heart knows the truth, but your head keeps getting in the way. That's Cabral's next revelation. The heart is the engine of your existence, but you've let your brain, overloaded with memories, fears, and outdated orders from the past, take over the driver's seat. Big mistake. The head complicates, divides, categorizes. The heart? You know, he's... It knows that life is as it is, not as you think it should be. Cabral warns that thinking too much is a trap. It's like using a calculator to enjoy a symphony. Get out of your head and into your heart, and suddenly, everything falls into place. Here's a radical thought. Only do what you love. Cabral argues that doing anything out of obligation is a direct route to misery. You're chasing a paycheck, maintaining a relationship out of habit, showing up because you think you have to. Stop. When you do what you love, success is inevitable, not because you're hustling, but because life rewards authenticity. And when you're living authentically, it's not even hard. It's a natural flow an unfolding of events that leads you exactly where you're supposed to be. No effort. Just alignment. And while you're at it, serve. Give without expecting anything in return. Help a child, assist an elderly neighbor, or just be there for someone. Service, Cabral insists, is the surest way to happiness. It's impossible to be miserable when you're pouring yourself into others. And the beauty of it? The more you give, the more you get. Not in a transactional sense, but in a cosmic one. It's a cycle, a flow of energy that never stops as long as you keep it going. Now let's talk about noise. Evil is loud, good is quiet. That's why it seems like the world is burning. It's not. Goodness is the majority. It just doesn't seek attention. One bomb makes more noise than a million acts of kindness, but that doesn't mean kindness isn't winning. Cabral flips the script here. He reminds us that the world is full of quiet heroes doing the right thing, making life better for everyone, in ways you may never notice. And the kicker, the bad guys always lose. They burn out because evil feeds on itself while goodness keeps growing. Silent but unstoppable. Listen closely. Cabral's next lesson is one of inner dialogue. There's a voice inside you, one that knows everything. It's ancient, wise, and beyond your years. If you could just quiet the distractions, social media, news, the incessant noise of modern life, you'd hear it clearly. That voice doesn't get confused. It doesn't worry. It just knows. And if you could live by it, you'd stop searching for meaning because you'd realize it was with you all along. Fear and ignorance go hand in hand. Cabral makes it clear that fear is the result of not understanding something. And what's the cure? Love. Simple but devastatingly effective. Love doesn't fear because it doesn't measure, doesn't compete, and doesn't end. When you embrace love, fear evaporates like mist under a rising sun. The ego the part of you that thinks it needs to protect itself shrinks in the face of love. You realize that nothing can harm you because there's nothing to protect. 
You are part of everything and everything is part of you. Labels, nationality, profession, status, these are distractions. Cabral argues that we're not our job titles or national flags. We're not our social roles. These are just masks we wear to navigate society, but they're not real. The sooner you realize that, the freer you'll be. You are, at your core, a spirit passing through this world, borrowing a body, a name, and a role for a little while. When you let go of the need to cling to these things, you start to see the bigger picture. You're part of a universal dance, an intricate web where everything is connected. Innocence versus Ego Cabral breaks down how innocence sees the world as new every single day, while the ego reduces everything to a boring, predictable routine. The ego judges, labels, and seeks to control. Innocence just enjoys the ride. Think of a child seeing snow for the first time. That's what innocence feels like. It's a state of perpetual wonder. Cabral challenges us to return to that state. To let go of our jadedness, our cynicism, and our need to know everything. The innocent don't get bored because every day is an adventure. The ego. It's always searching for something more because it's never satisfied. Finally, Cabral brings it all home with a final lesson in simplicity and wisdom. When you strip away the noise and the labels, you see the world for what it really is, one interconnected whole. Wisdom isn't about knowing more, it's about understanding the unity of everything. Once you grasp that, your thoughts become powerful tools capable of shaping your reality. That's the alchemy Cabral talks about, turning lead into gold, misery into joy, death into life. All you need is the courage to live it. And so my friends, here we are. You're not depressed, you're distracted isn't just a book. It's a manual for living fully, fearlessly, and without distraction. Facundo Cabral pulls no punches. He's lived through enough tragedy to know what really matters and he's distilled that wisdom into this incredible work. So if you're feeling lost, if the world seems bleak, maybe it's not that life is bad. Maybe you're just distracted from all the beauty and truth that surrounds you. Thank you for sticking with me on this journey. Remember, life's too short to live distracted. And if you enjoyed this dive into Cabral's world, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and join the conversation in the comments below. Stay curious, stay bold, and remember, you're not depressed, you're just distracted.